What's going on guys? My name is Jeff and this is Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're doing the plumbing on my new reef tank. What's going on guys? We're back with a new video and if you're new to what we're doing here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Alright, so today we're talking about the plumbing on my new reef tank, so let's jump into it. Alright guys, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at plumbing the water box aquarium. And this box came inside the crate and I do believe it has all the parts necessary to get this tank plumbed and up and running so we're getting closer with every step and hopefully uh, we can get some water in this tank pretty soon uh, this really is the major last piece as far as getting water in the tank so uh, we're going to take a look at the plumbing of the water box then we're going to look at what i'm going to put in the aquarium for equipment then we're going to get into live rock and uh, sand and all that stuff so uh, let's open this box up and see what we have one of the interesting things about water box aquariums is they don't actually require any glue whatsoever for the plumbing which is a very very welcome relief because um, that really is probably the hardest part of plumbing an aquarium outside of figuring out how you want the water to move through the system is actually gluing everything together and making sure that it's watertight. All right, so we have our plumbing out of the box. Uh, pretty simple setup, and it looks like it's gonna be pretty easy to put together. I'm not exactly sure what this stuff's for. Maybe it's um, the only thing I can think of. Yeah, this is what it's for right here. All right, so this guy into this as an extension into that piece right there. So that's where they're going to go. So really, this is all the plumbing that you're going to have for the water box. And what they've done is they've gone ahead and glued a lot of the parts that need to be glued together for you so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so a lot of this is just, you know, gluing certain parts in uh, that to basically save you time and make it a lot more uh, efficient to set this up. This right here is the, what is going to be in the back of the tank. This is the overflow, so the water is going to enter into here. You have this protector on there to keep marine life from entering into the sump, which most of us that have been in this hobby for any extended period of time have had that experience uh, once or twice and basically have a little bit of plastic protecting the bulkhead so this is a pretty simple setup right here this portion with the valve which that would be closing this is opening the valve is going to screw into the bottom of this and in between is going to be the tank what I need to do essentially is get this piece in there, hold it in place, and then screw this into the bottom. Um, which hopefully is somewhat easy to do. I mentioned on the first video that that section of the back of the tank's not very big and I'm, I had a hard time getting my forearms in there. So hopefully I can, you know, get this at least wedged into place and then be able to screw that portion into the bottom. This section right here is the safety overflow so this pipe is going to be in the back with this one and as you can see it stands a lot taller so if this were to become clogged and the water level will rise up and then eventually hit this full siphon so that it will drain the water out and make sure that it doesn't just completely overflow the back of the tank and then spill out onto the floor so it's really good to have a built-in safety mechanism uh, a little bit of redundancy is definitely a huge thing in saltwater aquariums and i'm glad to see that that's built into the water box so those two sections right there are for bringing the water into the sump now for putting the water back into the tank from the sump 
you have this section right here. Uh, that was the only piece that isn't glued together that really could be glued together. Um, but I'm not, you know, ultimately I don't think that it's going to be a huge deal. But basically the water from down here, there's a soft tube, which we have right there. It has a couple of clamps on it. it has a couple of clamps uh, to be able to hold that hose in place on things. And that's going to fit right on the bottom of there. You'd have your clamp over the top of it. The other end on your return pump. And then this end connected to this tubing. And then the water comes out the nozzles. So you have a little bit of mobility with these nozzles. And they're built pretty, pretty rugged. I'm actually very impressed with how strong these are. They have a little bit of a gasket to hold them in place. And I wonder if these pop off at all. Yeah, they unscrew. Okay, so these nozzles unscrew. So you're able to put this up against the glass, put that piece back, and it's going to hold it in place relatively well. Um, I would probably not have the this little gasket on the tank side. I'd put it on the back. A little bit of protection between this plastic and the tank, and it's going to look a lot cleaner as well. So, very excited. Looks like it's very simple to do, like I did with the stand. I'm going to time myself and see how long this actually takes to put all this stuff in place on the water box. found that has made this process really really easy is taking these uh, valves apart and literally you put this on after the fact and then take the the part that is inserted uh, gently glide the pipe just over that and I actually was able to get the return pipe in there without even holding the top uh, just having it over the hole and in place I was able to start threading in there and get that union valve insert connected to the pipe above it. Uh, so definitely uh, pretty handy these union valves uh, when it comes to aquarium plumbing and definitely very easy to set up the plumbing on the water box aquarium. Alright so I have both the union valves or all three union valves put in for the return pipe and then the two stand pipes that are located in the bottom and it did take two people to be able to do that I had to get the help of my daughter had her stand up on a step ladder and hold those two pipes in by themselves by screwing in the return pipe first I was actually able to do that one myself but I ended up needing to take off those tips so I was able to get in there and hold those ones so She's got little hands, so it worked out pretty good for me. And this is what it looks like inside the stand. So you remember that cutout from the stand video? This is where all the plumbing comes into underneath the tank, into the sump. And taking out those unions, the insides of them, made this a pretty easy deal. Definitely worked out good for me. One thing I do definitely want to mention is not to put a ton of pressure on those bulkheads because they can break the glass. I, at least in my experience in the past, I have put them on too tight and cracked the glass. So it's good to have them snug, but not snug to the point where it could cause problems. So first things first, what we're going to do is take this union slash bulkhead and attach that to the return pipe. So that was pretty easy. Um, fortunate part, I am going to be able to move the sump over to the side. That was something I didn't think I was going to be able to do, uh, but I should be able to do it without too much of a problem. And really, the last thing that I need to do at this point is put that soft hose on the return line, which is right here. So very, very easy 
to do the plumbing on the water box. So we got everything plumbed up, ready to go. The return hose is in. Those clamps are awesome. I was very impressed with how easy that was to do. We have all the pipe installed. I ended up using those extensions that come with it. I thought about possibly not using the extension on the safety standpipe just so I could know that there was something wrong, that I would have that gurgling noise, be able to uh, realize that something was going wrong and hear the water flowing through that pipe. But probably should be able to hear it on the top anyways due to siphoning, full, a full siphon, I should be able to hear that. So went ahead and just put those extensions on anyways. So very, very impressed with how easy this was. It, it took me probably about 15 minutes to get all of the plumbing set up on this tank. So very easy to do. Uh, Waterbox outdid themselves on designing the system to make it easy to set up and get going especially if you're new to the hobby i definitely would recommend considering going with this tank so uh so far we have the stand put together we've got the tank on top we've got the sump ready to go i'm going to be cutting plastic here pretty soon so in next week's video what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the equipment that i'm going to be using on this tank so this is the marine plus so we have lighting, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but we have to talk about heating. We need to talk about the return pump. We also need to talk about water circulation and a couple other little gadgets that we're gonna have on this tank. So definitely stay up to date. I'm gonna be doing a playlist for this build. So if you missed anything, you can go back, check it out. All right, folks, that's gonna do it for today's video. I wanna thank you for joining me. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Even though that's it for today, there are plenty more Mad Hatter Reef videos to go around. Special thanks to all the Patreon supporters that have made this video possible.